So I got a special guest today, my man Adam Walsh, and we're going to talk about his 50k a month sales strategy. So my man Adam, welcome, bro. I'm so glad to have you here, and uh, feel free to introduce yourself. You know what you do, how'd you get into SMMA, and and how you got into learning all these amazing sales strategies that you learn now. Sweet man, that's quite the intro. So. Let's do it. Let's go. Excited for this one. So yeah, as you mentioned, my name is Adam. I run a social media marketing agency. We scaled pretty fast. So we went from zero to 10K a month in 45 days. And then roughly a year after that point, we got to 50K a month. Okay. So in this podcast, hopefully I can share with you some tips that we used as an agency to close clients. Mm. Second thing I want to mention is that a lot of the clients we work with are fitness coaches, fitness professionals, PTs. We do work with some brands as well, like e-commerce brands, but a lot of our clients are coaches. So a lot of what we do is very similar to what they do to get their clients. So if you guys are listening, if you're a coach, PT, you're selling online, we can definitely give you some tips in here today. And the last thing then, I have a coaching business on the back of the success of the agency. So I also help people start social media marketing agencies and uh, yeah, haven't quite hit 50K a month with that one, but just shy of that number in the coaching business. So we're getting there slowly but surely. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Those are some big numbers, man. Those are some big numbers. I get inspired every time I talk to Adam Walsh, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's incredible, bro. And I'd love to hear a little bit of, you know, because you scaled really fast and not a lot of people do that, right? So what would you say was like the main component of helping you like scale so fast and, and making sales so quick? Great question, man. So I'm going to break that into two points. Okay. So first I'm going to talk about the zero to 10 K a month. Okay. What I did then specifically to get to that mark. Cause again, that's the goal of the mark. Once you get to 10 K a month, your life changes, you know, possibilities open up. You can take care of your family. We all want to get there. The second point then is I'll touch on how we went from 10 K a month to 50 K a month. Cause that's quite a different journey. The same tactics, you know, the tactics had to be changed, right? The strategies had to be um, switched up a bit. So let's start with zero to 10K. So zero to 10K for the agency. First off, leverage connections, right? So again, I'm trying to relate this back to you guys listening. So if you're in the fitness industry, like you probably have connections, whether it's professional connections, people on LinkedIn, people you went to high school with, people you went to college with, keep all of that, right? Keep all of that and put yourself out there that you're starting this new thing. So I put it out there that I was starting an agency. Um, I didn't get any clients directly from it, but it helped me get my confidence up, which for sales is one of the most important parts of sales. Is you showing up actually confident with conviction that you can do the thing that you say you do. So definitely put yourself out there. Tell the world I'm doing this because that's going to give you a form of accountability, right? Because I knew people were watching. I was like, hey, I, I better fucking make this work, right? I, I can't just tell people I started an agency <laughs> or a business and then not make any money, right? And not get any clients. So that was a big part of it. Um, exactly. We did a lot of personal voice message outreach on Instagram to get our first probably 10 clients. So at the time, I used to post some fitness mm. content, okay? I wasn't a fitness coach, but I used to post uh, infographic sharing nutrition tips and a few, you know, uh, workout selfies here and there. So it had a little bit of an audience, a couple thousand followers in that network. So I was then able to just look at the people who are already in my network, reach out to them. But instead of hitting them with like a copy and paste, slightly spammy message, I just use voice notes, right? Two, two reasons why. One, personal connection. Not everybody does it. It resonates deeper with someone. But two, again, I wanted to get my confidence up. So I knew if I was going to be on a sales call, well, I'm not doing any sales calls now. So I better get my voice and my tonality and my my ability to speak to that point where it's actually damn good. Cause that's such, such a key part of sales. So yeah, man, zero to 10 K was yeah. primarily just on hustle, no systems, no, you know, crazy secret yeah. strategies, just get out there, connect with people, voice message, make the conversations happen. And then of course, book as many calls as you humanly can and go into each call with the intention of I'm going to learn. I might not close, but I'm going to learn. I'm going to see what went wrong, see if I can serve them. And that's it. Going from 10K to 50K a month was very different. This was not hustle. This was not me sending voice messages. I realized that that strategy was great, but it wasn't scalable. So I was like, okay, I can either keep doing two, three hours a day on voice messaging, 
and will slowly scale up for sure because I know it works. But the point I was at, I realized that I was getting burnt out of doing voice messaging. So I decided to switch to just uh, like text outreach. We did it all on Instagram. We did use LinkedIn, but like 80 to 90% of our clients came from Instagram. So we're going to focus on that. And the big difference here was that we had a, we had VAs. Okay. So I wasn't sending the messages. I had virtual assistants that would basically follow a script that I had tested myself. So I'll put in the hustle for a few weeks. I'll test out the messages. I'll test out the scripts. I had an outreach tracker, basically a spreadsheet tracking, you know, how many opens am I getting a day? How many responses, how many people are booking calls so that I had clarity. I couldn't lie to myself and say, Hey, Adam, this isn't working. You're doing it wrong. It was like, the numbers are there. It's either working or it's not. And it's not about the market or the economy or whatever, it's the fucking numbers, right? If the numbers are not good, I got to change the script. Something I'm doing wrong. I was taking full responsibility, yeah. right? That's a huge part of it, man. Yeah. Uh, and then once I proved that, I was like, cool, yeah. let's get a VA. So paid a virtual assistant, probably three, $4 an hour. She came in, did that for a couple hours a day. And that for us was a, a very scalable system. What we did was we used my page. We had a bunch of other pages as well. So I had like personal backup accounts. My business partner, he had an Instagram page. Again, we made backups for his page as well. So, you know, within probably the first couple of months, we were able to go from one Instagram page to, you know, five, six, seven, very, very easily. And that meant we could do five times the, the amount of outreach that we were previously doing. So that was a huge part of how we scaled. Further on from that then was building out, you know, our CRM, making sure we had a tracking system for our leads so that when someone came in slightly interested that we know how to convert them from interested to booking that call to then actually closing them somewhere down the line the crm was absolutely pivotal man i'm sure you can agree with that you know just having that clarity of where people are in their journey means that i can hit people with different messages different emails different voice notes whatever to get them to the next point in the journey so crm was a huge part and yeah, from there, man, it was just, I focused on sales, you know? So I got myself out of outreach and out of prospecting and I just did yeah. sales. There was a point when we were like at that peak scaling where I remember it so clearly, man, right? I'm in Valencia. I'm with my business partner. We have one of our team members there as well. And my business partner is more focused on the client delivery side of the business. So I was always marketing and sales and he was, you know, doing his work, sitting mm -hmm. on a laptop. Chat, chatting back and forth with the team. And I was looking at him and I was like, wow, you have it sweet, man. Cause I'm sitting here 10 hours a day on sales calls. You know, I was doing like 10 calls a day, <laughs> 11, 12, you know, yeah. emailing back and forth with the prospects yeah. trying to close the deals. And I remember just that feeling of like, wow, this is a hustle right now. Obviously needed to be done. Yeah. And then from there we, we got a salesperson. Mm -hmm. So I was able to, you know, get my hands out of sales, but nonetheless, sales is probably the most important skill in business, whether you want to do an agency coaching business or really anything. It's that's why you're on this podcast right now. You know how pivotal it is, right? A hundred percent. And you mentioned something so powerful. We said that the first 10 K was like an absolute hustle. Yeah. It's like, you got to do a lot of work yourself. You got to network with the right people. You got to reach out to people. You kind of already know and see if you can offer your services mm -hmm. to them. But after like 10 K to 50 K, that was like building a team. And most importantly, when you mentioned like the DMs, you mentioned something real powerful, which is like you need data and numbers to back up if something is working or it isn't. And I believe that the sales process already starts in a DM mm -hmm. with these people, you know, like that. That's where the sale really starts because you're having a conversation with them. You have something that is proven already that already works for other people based on data. Now, once you figured out that system, it's like once you figure out that goal mine, once you find what's working, you don't need to change it no more. Because it's already working. And it's, if, it's, if it's working without you, even better. Because that's scalable, right? It's like working without you. So it sounds like once you like figure that down, you're just like, all right, now let me scale this. Now let me open up more pages and let's keep doing the same thing. And it's actually a gold mine that I actually got from you recently that we actually added into our coaching business. So shout out to Adam yeah, for that, hey. for sure. And uh, that's amazing, man. And, and I'm curious, like when you were doing like those 10 to, to 12 calls a day, did you ever reach a point where you're just like, like, damn, like, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be even to take, like, be able to take the n next week sales call. Because I know when I was doing sales, like, there was a point where I was having 10 or 12 calls a day, uh, especially for like another company that I was working for. 
And I was like, man, 10 to 12 calls, I'm I'm dead. I'm burning out. I didn't even feel like going to the gym or even having any food. I was just like straight on just sales mode. So how was that experience having like 10 to 12 calls a day? And, and how did you transition now? From- yeah, very similar, man. Very similar. Very stressful. And, right. you know, I think with sales, it's interesting because there's like this high, right, of, you know, for me, right, I can literally think back where my first call of the day, even though I had done hundreds of calls, the first call a day, nearly every day, there'd be the doubt in my mind of like, uh, maybe, maybe they just won't show to the call, you know, maybe they'll just ghost me and I can just chill here for 30 minutes, right? So I'd even have those self-sabotaging doubts and those thoughts, right? And then you go to the end of the day and let's say you've done <laughs> 10 calls. All right, you probably closed two, three, four people that day, depending on your close rate for the day, right? 20 to 40%, pretty good. The high, crazy. You know, I would, I would finish sales and I'd be completely done, you know, burn for the day. Like, I don't want to do anything else. But like that feeling of like looking at the Stripe account being like, oh, yeah, there's another 3K in revenue. Hell yeah. You know, I made that. You know, I made that possible. That's a good feeling. But yeah, for sure, man. I got yeah. burnt out and... You know, that's when I decided, right, I don't want to do this anymore because I've just done it so much. And I think that's really normal, right? Like some people can power through that and do it forever. But I was like, I'm running this business to have freedom. So like if I'm spending 10 hours a day doing something that I no longer enjoy, this is a waste of my time. This is not good for me. Uh, You know, it's not good for anybody involved. So getting out of sales was actually really difficult. I'll be honest, man. It was the hardest position I've ever hired for. So obviously I've hired client managers, designers, editors, branding specialists, like you name it, we've hired them. But yeah, sales, so difficult. First person I hired, he wa- he had sales experience, but he didn't know much about the marketing agency space. And he really struggled because of his lack of knowledge. We trained him up. We gave him like videos, courses, all that good stuff. But eventually we just had to pull the plug because you know I was paying my team members, my VAs, right, to book these calls to manage the CRM and he was showing up and every, every call was not closing. I think he closed one out of my like 10 yeah. or 15. And I was like, right, this is, this ain't going to work. So the second person I hired, which is our yeah. current salesperson was actually a team member because that's what I found with this first guy was his problem is not that he's not good at sales. He's okay at sales. Like he's decent. He just doesn't know enough to yeah. answer the nitty gritty questions. So he gets to 25 minutes of the call and it's good. And then they're like, oh, so what happens in this process? Or what happens if we post this content? And he didn't know. So I was like, right, let me just try a team member. Uh, So Megan, Megan, if you're watching this somehow, if you found this podcast, shout out to you. Uh, She's one of our team members. She's a client manager. So she deals with the clients. You know, she knows everything in the business, like everything. So I was like, do you want to make more money? She was like, yep. I was like, all right, do you want to do some sales? It's like, mm, not too sure. I'm open to it. Like, I'll try it. And then we just tried it. So she would just watch my sales calls back. You know, I have them all recorded in a folder. She watched them back. She would write notes. I gave her a script. Um, I th- think, yeah, for her first few calls, I didn't even sit in on the calls with her. I just said, go for it. And I watched back her recordings. So she would take the calls. She would do a debrief to me afterwards, tell me what went good, what went bad. And slowly but surely, she got to a good place. You know, she closes probably 30% of calls. We pay her 10% commission and she gets that 10% commission for the first three months the client is with us. So let's just say a client pays a thousand per month for a minimum contract of three months because that's how we work with our clients. You know, she's just made a hundred for those each month. So that's like $300 for a 30 minute call. Pretty damn good. (laughs) <laughs> and the beauty with sales too is that she'll continue to make more too because the pipeline will increase like she's and she's going to stay for a long period of time at any moment she can have somebody just reach out to her and be like hey uh about the about the agency by the way i need some i need some help now so i'm ready to hire you guys and then boom it's like easy sales for her so it's like as you continue on with sales your pipeline increases and the likelihood of you making more money also increases too so true and you mentioned something really powerful which is, you know, you brought in somebody that was already a part of your team. It's something that I realized too, just working with other coaching businesses too, is that it's so difficult to find somebody that that is good, that doesn't really understand the like the the business as well, because it's going to take them time to pick up, to understand the language, to understand your way of, of how you help your students, because 
if people or prospects feel that level of uncertainty of like, you don't know how to answer a question or you don't know if you do this or that, they're never going to buy from yeah. somebody that's uncertain. So simply yeah. because of that, like they're never going to buy, you know, like he might be good, like a good salesperson, but simply because he doesn't understand the business, like the, the prospect feels uncertainty and uncertainty leads to no money and we want money. Yeah. All right. So that, that's really powerful. And that's actually like a really smart move. Cause that's something that even I'm looking into, like I'm looking at the people who join our program mm -hmm. and seeing like who could be the ones that I could potentially bring to really learn sales or want to do sales for us. Because uh, I think we're in that same period together where even I'm thinking, and this is something I brought to my business partners. Like I eventually want to step back from sales. I love it. You know, this podcast revolves around sales. Like you guys know, I love sales. I mean, I love everybody who listens to the unfiltered sales podcast, but there's reaches a point in that entrepreneurship journey where you're just like, the smartest thing that I could do is actually take a step back and view the business in a different perspective to see what are the next things that we should do as, as a whole, as a team, instead of still working in it. Cause doing sales is like, you're still working in the business and not really on it. So I feel like that's, that's the next move for us for sure. That's a gold mine piece, a hundred percent. And what would you say you like your recent sales hire found the most difficult in terms of sales and, and how did she overcome that? I think she really struggled with the rejection that you naturally face as a salesperson. Yeah. Rejection, yeah. confidence, and leaning into being salesy, you know, being willing to use tactics, yeah. you know, use certain phrases that get someone to go from, hmm, maybe I'll think about it to, fuck it, why not? Let me sign up today and see what happens, you know? So for her, that I think those were the main yeah. struggles. Uh, I'd have to ask Megan to see, you know, what they were, but... <laughs> I can definitely tell you, yeah, you know, yeah. anybody who does sales for the first time, if you haven't done it before, that's what you're going to struggle with. You're going to, you're facing rejection, right? So if you face rejection in your personal life, yeah. let's just say you've, you've been in uh, horrible scenarios with, with dating and you've had trust issues and you're always getting rejected. Any girl you reach out to, you're probably going to bring that same energy into sales because it's the same thing. You're just like, you're pitching someone something that they might necessarily not want at the start, but your job is to convince them that they want it very similar to dating. So I think anybody starting is going to face rejection yeah. and you got to be okay with that. And you got to realize that it's a numbers game. One of the biggest things I did yep. to help me get better at sales was to stop viewing my prospects as people, but as numbers. And that sounds so inhumanly wrong, right? It sounds so twisted and <laughs> like, you know, just not a good human thing to do. But I was like, I was looking at them too much like a person. Of this is a person, I want them to like me. Yeah. I want them to, you know, think Adam is cool and Adam is this great guy. I was like, no, these are prospects for my business. You know, there does not need to be this crazy personal connection. Of course, it helps, right? It makes the sale easier if someone feels, you know, a, a personal connection with me. But yeah, that was actually quite pivotal. And that really helped me to just uh, be more confident because it took a lot of my nerves away as well because I wasn't thinking again, as, as people and, you know, oh my God, what if they say yes? What if they say no? But just as cool, it's another call. That's all it is. And let's do it. I love that. That's powerful, man. Cause a lot of people have to be, be able to separate themselves from that, that thinking, you know, they're trying to build a, a relationship. They're trying to get a friend or something on the call. Yeah. But when you actually see it as like, yeah. this, this, this is a business and ultimately you have to like treat it as one and everybody speak to we understand that they're humans, but it's all a numbers game. And the more people we have on these calls, the higher potential we have of really making more money. And and to you, it sounds like once you really like learned and, and hacked your own system and created your own system to book more calls, that was like the, the needle mover for you. It's like you hacked that system of like, boom, we figured out organically how to book calls. Now it's like a lot easier to, to have a bunch of calls on my calendar. Right. And that really leads me to ask you, because I understand like, you know, you, you got into sales and, and you're crushing it now. What would you say is, is the main thing that really helped you like build your confidence? Is it just like that? Okay. Feeling, is it something that, you know, any, any type of things that you've done to really build your confidence? And I feel like that's something that people lack in this world nowadays, especially with sales. Like they just lack confidence and uh, they lack energy. Is there something that you've done to really improve it over time? For me to improve sales, I had to improve as a person first. When I first started my business, I was right. very not confident. You know, I definitely had a lot of insecurities and that carries true. And that's going to come across on your sales calls. So I think the biggest thing for me was first, just like growing as a person. Okay. Being more confident in my personal life. Cause if I can be more confident in my personal life, 
I will get better. So little things I would do was like, uh, I would send all the people that I would talk to, like friends, family, I would send them voice messages instead of texts because I need to get good at this yeah. conversating thing. Let me just do it all the time with people I already know. So that was one thing I did. Um, just, yeah, level up in your personal yeah. life, whether that's, you know, start working out, make yourself look better, feel better about yourself, whatever it is for you, uh, find that thing and, and just do it. But the biggest mover for, uh, for everyone, I think, is going to be just showing up and doing it because it's the hardest thing. You can do all the prep work. You can take all the notes. You can do the voice messages with your friends. But the hardest thing, but that is going to get you the most results and get you to be the best salesperson is to do sales, to do sales. Yeah. A hundred percent. I love that. And you, you mentioned how, um, how you started doing voice messages to everybody and you, you had to improve your personal life to become a greater person and, and just a greater salesperson in general. And I talk about this all the time and I believe it with absolute certainty, Adam, is that you have to like transcend into becoming like a whole new person. And some people don't see it. Like they think that, that the person that they're coming into to, to, to do this new game of sales or to build their coaching business or to, to become a fitness expert, they believe that it, it still has to be the same person mm. that they were their whole entire lives. But they don't understand that. They need to take a step out of that. They need to transcend into becoming a whole new person. Because a lot of the guys that come to us, they come in with like a trainer mindset. You know, they're good at training people in person and making sure they get a good pump, you know. And I get them because I was like that once myself. However, they need to transition into becoming like a CEO, yeah. into becoming an entrepreneur. Like th this is like a whole different game. And and I'm glad you brought that up because something that, that I teach to, to my students is that I tell them to do this everywhere that they go, whether it's the Starbucks, McDonald's. I'm just kidding. They shouldn't be going to McDonald's. They got to stay in shape. Um, if they're going to the gym or they're going to, to the front desk or something, I tell them, you need to make a conversation, minimum three to five conversations a day, and practice these two things, which is mirroring and labeling. Mm. So mirroring is just repeating the last three words somebody shares with you. Oh, I need to think about it, Adam. Think about it. Oh, uh, man, it's, oh, man, I've been going through such a tough time, you know? I'll be like, oh, it sounds like you're, you've been going through a lot. And that's a label, nice. right? So I tell them, everywhere you go, just try to change people's state. Put a smile on them. Because if you could do it on somebody random, you could do it to the prospects on the call. You know, It's like going to Starbucks. I tell them, every time I go to Starbucks, well, I don't know if they have Starbucks out there in, in Ireland or Portugal. <laughs> but out here... Uh, you know, Starbucks, I find that they look so sad or they look like, you know, they, they might hate their job. And I understand where they're coming from because I used to be that guy, right, that, that worked at a fast food place. But my intention is just to put a smile on their face. Oh, oh, hey, how's your day going? Oh, it's all right. It's all right because mine's going amazing. And once I say that, they're just like, their state changes. Oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I make a conversation. I've told a story a lot before. And I say how I, I got a free Starbucks once simply because I had a decent conversation with a girl. That had a previous customer that was like a complete dick mm. and uh, i just made her happy i made her day she gave me like a free start nice. and it's because all i did was just talk and, and just try to change their state so i'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people need to really understand that in this world is that it's all about like you're becoming into a whole new person yes, transcending sir. into into like a whole new high level because sales is like a high income skill and the people that understand it i feel like we're like living at kind of like at a higher vibration mm because we understand how to speak to people and how to have conversations. I, I see us, Adam, as like we're superheroes, nice. simply because yeah. we, under, we have this superpower, <laughs> you know? And not a lot of people have that superpower. The sales you know? superpower, but, uh, It's a powerful one. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, there it is, cool, man. And uh, when it comes down to, um, to sales, I, I also understand that you're, you're a big person on, on high ticket as well. Like you, you're also like a high ticket person in terms of your coaching. Cause I know some people love to sell like low ticket products and you're big on, on, on high ticket as well. I know you, you sell high ticket coaching as well, right? Yeah. It's a, it's an interesting or, one somewhat. for me right okay. now, my coaching, I would actually say it's lower ticket and it's more focused on volume okay. because we don't, we do have an element of one-to-one -one coaching in the coaching service we provide. Mm -hmm. But it's slightly different. I'll give you a rough breakdown, right? Someone comes in, they get a course, they get two group coaching calls every week, and they're in a group chat, a private group chat with me and my like support manager. So they do get one-to-one -one coaching, but it's very scalable for us. So we actually do lower ticket. We have a higher ticket on the back end. But if I was to start again, I would probably go with the approach of high ticket. I'll tell you why I went with lower ticket and why I would do high ticket in a different world, okay? For me, 
I have an audience on TikTok. So when I started my coaching business, I had the audience already. I started building my TikTok page before I decided that I'm going to start coaching. Okay. So built the agency was like, cool. I'm obviously decent at this. I have a level of knowledge that people want. Let me post content about this on TikTok. It's exactly what I did. So I only started the coaching business once I had maybe 30 or 40 K followers. So my decision was, okay, oh. I can do high ticket and I can do, you know, sales calls. And then I can do one-to-one -one group or one-to-one -one sessions, not group sessions. And I did that for a period of time. And I was like, I'm not enjoying this, not enjoying this. I didn't enjoy the, the coaching side of it because I wanted to have more impact, yeah. right? I didn't want to just help John set up his logo and his, his website. I want to be able to help 10 people just get straight into all the things that we make a video course, give it to them and then coach them all together on a weekly basis. So that's the route I chose. But if I was starting right now and I didn't have an audience and I was listening to this podcast, I would definitely not do that. And I would do a high ticket because you can go with the more yeah. lower ticket mass market approach when you have a market. I had a market to go to. So it was easier for me to do that with less work. I didn't have to do sales calls. People would just sign up via Instagram DM, you know, no calls involved, easy. And we still, that, still do that to this day and it works great for us. Again, we have the audience. So if you're listening to this and you don't have an audience, do high ticket, please, please do not try and sell a three, four, five hundred dollar course coaching thing because it's just not really going to work too well. You get a couple sales here and there, but you're not going to be getting to that five, ten k a month unless you just blow up and get a hundred k followers in the next few weeks. Now, a lot of the coaches in my agency, a lot of the fitness coaches, I want to reference some of them right now because they all do high ticket. There's a couple of clients that do not do high ticket and they struggle. So the ones that are really killing it are doing high ticket. We've got this one guy, Scott. He's got like, I think 20K followers on Instagram, which is good. Like that's a good amount of followers. But, you know, he was making probably 10K a month with 5K followers. So just goes to show you how much you can make, right? With that lower, lower audience. Yeah. Uh, you know, for him now, I don't know the exact figure, but I'd imagine he's doing 40, 50K a month. You know, he's got a full team built out. So, you know, he's not the most jacked guy in the world, first off. He doesn't have the biggest audience in the world. He's not an influencer, but he's making bank because he knows this stuff. He knows sales. He knows high ticket. He then builds out a team on the back end to service clients, and he is doing pretty damn good. I think another one of our clients, yeah. um, I'm actually not going to say his name because you'll know who he is straight away because it's a very <laughs> distinguishable first name. So we'll just call him F. <laughs> okay, so F okay, for sure. has like 120K <laughs> on Instagram. You know, big Facebook group, okay. big personal page on Facebook. And same thing, you know, high ticket only. I'm pretty sure he's doing one 200K a month. You know, and you could take another Jeez. influencer. You know, we could find an influencer right now who's got 100K followers, but they're selling an app or, I don't know, some me oh, meal man. planner or like a done for you <laughs> ebook, whatever. And they're probably making a couple grand a month, you know, two, three, four, maybe 5k, yeah. maybe 10k at a really good month. But like, they're definitely not making those serious figures. So if you guys watching and listening, yeah. please do high ticket, unless you're like already influencer status, and then you can maybe experiment with something different. But for most of you, you're not going to be at that level. Yeah, absolutely. No, you mentioned that it's extremely powerful. Everybody thinks they need a big following nowadays, but there's people like this that you mentioned that have a small following and they're absolutely crushing the game. You just need to learn the the three most powerful skills, which is you know learning how to market, learning how to sell, and, and having a great system. And with a system too, it's all about just like building a team. And that's where a lot of people just go wrong. Like they make some money, they might go spend it on some some dumb when they should be spending it on like building a team to help you save more time and to continue to, to scale, you know? Yeah. So that that's powerful, man. And, and I'm glad we brought you on because this is really powerful. We basically gave everybody the gold nuggets on how they can go from 10K to 50K a month.